Hey guys, today is Saturday, February 8th of 2020. Welcome to Backstage with Millionaires. I'm Caleb, your host. And today we're gonna to be talking about some of the latest news that has happened in India's startup ecosystem over the course of the last week. And as always, there's a lot to cover, so let's jump right in. First up in the news, Flipkart has decided to kill off Jabong. Now, this shutdown shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody who's been keeping track of what Flipkart has been up to over the course of the last few months. Back in June of 2019, Flipkart started reducing its marketing spend on Jibong while simultaneously incentivizing customers to move over to Mintra with attractive deals and offers. Then, between November and December of 2019, Jibong saw a 10% decrease in daily active users, while Mintra, on the other hand, saw a 30% increase in daily active users. Now, if you're someone who uses Jabong on a regular basis, you may be surprised to find that if you head over to jabong.com, you will be instantly redirected to mintra.com. However, you can still download the Jabong app, but you will find that on the app, there's a lot of empty racks and there's this sort of graphic, which is uh, encouraging you to head over to Mintra to continue your shopping. However, if you happen to be an employee at Flipkart, then this probably isn't a very big deal for you because back in November of 2018, Flipkart integrated Jabong and Mintra across all functions. Internally, they were basically the same thing. And at the same time, they also fired about 50% of their workforce. Um, so this is something that Flipkart has been envisioning, um, seeing on the horizon for a long time. Now, don't get me wrong, it is sad that Jabong is no longer with us. The company was founded back in 2012, so they've been around for about eight years. That's a long time. I mean, each individual company has its own story, and it's kind of sad to see Jabong's coming to a close, but survival of the fittest, you know? All right, moving on to the next piece of news, Paytm has launched their very own Android-powered POS device to help small businesses and merchants across India to embrace digital payments. Now, one thing that I find pretty cool about this device is that it accepts pretty much every type of payment. Paytm wallet, UPI, debit cards, credit cards, and even cash. Besides that, the device also automatically generates GST compliant bills and manages transactions through the Paytm for Business app. Now, as you probably already know, Paytm is the market leader when it comes to merchant mobile payments. And this POS device is only gonna strengthen that position, especially in tier two and tier three cities. In fact, more than half of all merchant mobile payments go through Paytm. All right, moving from one unicorn to another, things have gotten even worse over at Oyo. So Oyo started 2020 by firing thousands of employees, both in India and China. And now the fire has spread to the United States where they've laid off 360 staff members. That's about a third of their staff in the US. Besides laying off a few hundred employees in the US, Oyo has also decided to tweak its business model. As an example of this, Oyo used to give US hotels capital improvement investments, which was basically free money so that they could spruce up their hotels. Now though, according to Scrift.com, Oyo is expecting hotels to pay that money back every single month over 15 months. Another example of this business model tweak, again, according to Scrift.com, is that if Oyo decides to fire one of the hotel owners on their platform, then any loss in revenue to Oyo is payable for up to three years after the termination of said hotel owner. Needless to say, the start of this new decade has not been kind to Oyo. And if you wanna know more about the company, we made a video about some of the latest controversies that have surrounded it. You can go check that video out up here. All right, next up in the news, on-demand payments platform Instamojo has acquired SaaS-based startup Get Me A Shop for $5 million from Times Internet. With this acquisition, Instamojo is looking to provide more comprehensive solutions for micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises like WhatsApp selling, CRM, and built-in analytics. Now, Instamojo is currently being used by about 1.2 million merchants, and they're adding 2,000 new merchants to the platform every single day. So if you combine that with some of the changes that are gonna be coming as a result of this acquisition, they're probably gonna be able to reach their goal of hitting 2 million merchants by the end of the year. And to accelerate that process even more, Times Internet has has invested an undisclosed amount of funds into Instamojo. All right, moving on to some funding news, Vogo has raised $25 million in its Series C round. Now, if you haven't seen our interview with Anand, he's one of the co-founders of Vogo, you can check that video out up here. It's one of our most popular uploads. Um, but if you don't know much about the company, it was started in 2016 here in Bangalore, but you can also use their service in Chennai, Hyderabad, and Mysore. And basically what they do is they enable you to rent a scooter for a short period of time to get around the city. 
So when we interviewed Anand back in early 2019, the company had just finished raising $100 million from Ola Cabs. Now, with this $25 million Series C round, the total amount of funds, according to Crunchbase, that Vogo has raised amounts to about $158 million. So this most recent round of funding has been led by Lightstone Aspada and Matrix Partners India. But in the past, they've also raised funds from investors like Medlife's co-founder and CEO Anant Narayanan, Ola Cabs, and Alteria Capital. All right, next up in the funding news, edtech startup Doubtnut has raised $15 million in a Series A round led by Tencent Holdings. Now, Doubtnut was founded back in 2016 by two IIT Delhi alumni, Tanushri Nagori and Aditya Shankar. And the idea behind Doubtnut is pretty interesting. Basically, the platform exists to clear the doubts of students with regards to their math problems. So students between the 6th and the 12th grade have two ways of interacting with Doubtnut. Either they can type the question that they have into the app, or they can take a photograph of the question that they're trying to solve. And then using machine learning algorithms, Doubtnut will give them the answer. The EdTech startup claims to have over 13 million users across their YouTube channel, website, and app. And due to the fact that about 85% of their users are in smaller Indian cities, the platform can actually read questions that are written in 12 different Indian languages, including English. Besides Tencent Holdings, some of the other investors that participated in the Series A round include Amidyar Network India, Japan's AET Fund, CureFit's co-founder Ankit Nagori, and Sequoia Capital India. And with these fresh funds, Doubtnut is planning on expanding its presence across India, adding more content for its growing audience, strengthening its technology platform, and hiring more employees to handle all of this growth. All right, next up in the funding news, Rebel Foods has raised 350 million rupees, that's 35 crores, in debt funding. Now, for those of you who don't know, Rebel Foods is the parent company for brands like Fasos, Beru's Biryani, Mandarin Oak, and Oven Story. The company was founded back in 2010 by J.D. Barman and Kalol Banerjee. And it operates more than 325 cloud kitchens across the globe. Now, it's expected that Rebel Foods will be using this debt funding, which they raised from Alteria Capital, to invest in its cloud kitchens and also expand into overseas markets like Europe and South Asia. So far, Rebel Foods has raised $280 million in equity and debt funding from investors like Goldman Sachs, KOTU Management, and Irving Investors. All right, the last piece of funding related news that I have for you is that edtech startup Mbibe has raised 900 million rupees, that's 90 crores, from one of their shareholders, Reliance Industries. Founded by Aditya Vasti back in 2012, Mbibe is an AI powered platform that helps students to prepare for competitive exams like JEE, AIMS, and BITSAT, among others. Now, this investment into Imbibe is actually part of Reliance's larger plan to expand its presence into India's education sector. They're actually looking to connect 1.9 million schools and 58,000 universities across India using technology. And so Imbibe is going to be part of that plan. All right, that is all the startup ecosystem news that I have for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I would love to hear your thoughts on some of the things that we talked about today. For example, Paytm's POS device. I think that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to seeing that in shops across the country in the future. Also, Oyo laying off 360 employees in the US. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily a very big deal for India, but it's definitely part of this trend that we're seeing where Oyo is laying off employees both in China and India, and also a lot of these um, sort of practices that are frankly pissing off uh, a lot of people uh, across the country. And then also uh, Jabong being sort of shut down by, by Flipkart. That's, you know, I, I don't personally use Jabong, um, but if you did, uh, let me know in a comment down below. And also, if you know of anybody who you think would be interested in watching this video, I would love it if you could share it with them. Um, and thank you so much, guys, for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires. I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.